Lion webinar. I'm Deb Barrett, and we're going to talk this um, month about medallions and tie bags and swag holders, some of those specialty items that we don't always order on a daily basis when it comes to decorative hardware, but are really important and certainly can be an add-on sale and, and a, another new revenue stream, if you will. So let's get started. You know, really, um, specialty is that sort of new normal. Most of us are dealing with different, you know, stacked windows, arch windows, transom windows, angled windows, and, and um, certainly medallions come into play with those and, and when you're working with those windows. When it muted high backs, it's certainly um, interesting because we're kind of coming out of a period of stationary panels on decorative rods just hanging there. What we're seeing is functioning traversing systems starting to come into play and with that also the draperies are now starting to be tied back. So if you haven't been in the business um, for uh, as long as I have, yes, dating myself here, you might not be familiar with some of the aspects of tieback. So we're going to start talking about, you know, these specialty applications. And I think the first place that we start is what's the client style? What's the design intent? You know, you've got to really talk to them. Is she traditional? Is she contemporary? You know, if she's contemporary, then maybe the medallions or swag holders or tiebacks from the Italian collection are going to work better for her than the Bohemia on crystal on wood. So you have to first sort of define what your client's style is, and then you want to move into starting to talk about specifying that. So most categories that we work with, whether it's in drapery hardware, fabrics, whatever it is, when we're talking about design products and services, we have a wide variety of options and pretty much start off with good, better, best. You know, the idea here is don't sell cheap. Start high, work down. Give her the most that you think she can afford or that she wants. And then if you've got to start peeling away the layers to meet her budget, then do that. Also sell the functionality of it. Um, for example, we're going to talk about embraces later. And, and that's really a wonderful option to a tie back. We'll talk more about that. You know, so start at the top, work down, and don't sell those, um, what I call those design nightmares. Function, architecture, what is going to limit and how you need to plan for it, your client expectations, the style, of course, any kind of fabrics that you're working with, and then the last is, and your strategy last, is what type of hardware is going to work with all those. Does it function? Does it not? Does it does it work with the architecture? Does it meet her expectations? Is Does it fit her style? And does it work with the fabric that you've chosen? for the treatment. But above all, it's about planning, planning, planning. How about this, obviously, grommet top drapery panel hung from swag holders or medallions or pegs, whatever you want to call them. But obviously, uh, not a lot of planning went into this because there's a lot more grommets <laughs> than there are swag holders and medallions. So particularly when you're working these with these specialty applications, you have to do a little bit more pre-planning. It's not as cut and dried. One thing to remember, though, when you're talking about solutions and options with your client is make sure you you can make sure that most of the top treatments that you're working with for rectangular windows can be adjusted and used with medallions. So let's first talk about medallions. Um, basic place to start obviously is measuring for medallions. So the first place you the first thing you're going to want to do is measure the area that you've got to cover. So that means what is oops sorry um, what is the measurement here number one from the first medallion on the leading edge to the last medallion before it returns back to the wall. And then, based on what that area is, you start deciding how many medallions do you need or attachment points. Remember, the area was always going to be divided evenly into one less section than the attachment points. So in here, there's six inches apart and there's five medallions and four spaces. And then you also want to measure down from the ceiling or up from the trim where you're going to place it. Um, this is an easy um, 
situation because obviously you've got um, a window, you don't have a specialty window, an arch, you aren't having to do an angle top for a slant. But when whether you're working with a standard, excuse me, I don't hate using that word, whether you're working with a rectangular window or a specialty window, one of the things that is a must-have in your toolkit is this, and this is grid tape. Some of you maybe are familiar with it. My friends, uh, design friend Susan O'Keefe um, loves it. She's really kind of known as a medallion queen. She does some amazing medallion treatments. But basically it's an adhesive tape with grid markings on it that's already pre-printed. So it allows you, so if, for example, in the uh, slide before, we were talking about six inches. So I could go over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I can li literally put this on the wall and, and start my starter hole for my medallion for the back plate and mark it off. Um, workrooms can use it to, can also pre-mark the tape if they need to, so where it has to be mounted for the installer. So I'd buy one for yourself, one for your workroom. It's two inches wide, it's um, um, similar to painter's tape, it has a peel off liner. It's not going to take the drywall um, with it when you peel it off. It's great, particularly if you're doing angle top windows. All you have to do is mark, let's say you want the medallions four inches above the top of the trim, mark four inches along the top of the trim and then lay the tape and boom, 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 the installer can install them. No more remeasuring, measuring. It's, it's really um, a time saver. Now most medallions come with some sort of decorative face medallion of your choices. Here's um, several of the ones that we sell at Orion. A wall plate that has a decorative face to it that also has screw holes that you would screw into the wall and then a screw in post. For Orion, we do an iron post and a wood post, and we also do pedestal hole back. So here's our screw-in plate. You've got your screw holes, and um, then this is the, um, the tap screw for the post to mount onto the wall. Here are some great looks, some of them from Orion, um, that were done with our hardware, some not, but to kind of give you some ideas. If you're not selling medallions, then maybe expand your horizons and move into this product category. So here, we this was actually done uh, and won a Decorating Den Award. Um, as you can see, she mixed um, the grapes and the leaves and the bird on the medallion. She also then added, what a great way to, you know, added the top of the trim back and show you. So we've got side panels and then the arch window with the medallions. So here she mixed several of our styles and then she also used medallions to tie the drapery back. This is from Adorn Design. Um, again, using Orion medallions in this uh, valance treatment. Really beautiful with these horns and side tails. And you can see the post and you get the great projection there. Uh, another medallion uh, treatment, both done on the side and on the center window. Here, done with arches. And then I mentioned Susan Keefe um, prior. Here is an angled tray ceiling, and she did medallions on the side with custom Roman shades on these arched windows. This is also another one of hers. I love it. It's one of my faves. So. Mixing a combo treatment of a woven wood, angle top woven wood, and then a Euro pleated drapery panel with um, medallions. So it, um, you can imagine using that grid tape how easy that's going to make it for not only your installer, but for you to, to specify and give all those measurements to your workroom. Because remember, when you're working with this type of window, this panel, drapery panel, is not a rectangle. If it was, it would pull up and taper to the um, return edge very much like a cascade would. This has an angle top cut to it. So you have to be really specific and measurements are critical in telling your workroom how to do that. Here, medallions and key tassels or tassels. Again, I believe this is by a designer, Tony, in, uh, from Decorating Den, were applied to this wonderful um, Roman, mock Romans and damask. 
or again, it doesn't have to hold the treatment. This is a pleated, box pleated um, eyebrow bay window, but they use medallions to drape the cording and, and then also to tie up the drapery. Or here, eyebrow windows again, which have shutters and wood blinds on them with medallions tied back. So lots of options for you. And lots of options within our own product line. This is our new design art product line. And these it's a uh, wood uh, and iron collection uh, from contemporary, transitional, through to some very elaborate, uh, traditional looks. But as you can see, we have some really beautiful medallions and um, all, all on post holdbacks. And I'll talk a little bit more about it, but notice that we, have, we also do dual finishes. So for example, this medallion is done in hammered silver and then the highlights are done in silver leaf. So for us, when we're specking out whole backs or medallions, um, we can do an iron post for you and we can put a wood or an iron finial to it. Almost all of our finials in our iron art, wood art, and design art collections um, are available as medallions. You just need to specify that when ordering it. We can also do wood posts. So you can do, um, actually, it's wood pole, a piece of the wood pole. So if you want it fluted or twisted for a more decorative look, we can also do the pedestal hold back plus the post plus um, a finial or a rod ender. These smaller um, medallions on the t on the front are, are are rod enders from Design Arts. A couple of medallion tips for you, because everybody always asks me, how do I do that? Well, obviously you can put a, if you have a pleat to the drapery panel, you can put a hook in there. And um, in some cases, you can have an eye welded onto the post, or you might want to um, also or consider putting a grommet at the top of the panel. You can order our S hooks, and then the S hook would sit on the uh, post, and then you could put a pin through that, or you could tie it. Again, keep in mind it's client style and design intent, but here's a couple of tips. The other thing is, as you know, is getting those mounting of those wall plates. Sometimes they can be tricky, whether it's a tie back or a medallion or a swing arm. So here's a tip that I've uh, shared with you before, is that when you have to hang something with those exact holes, photocopy the back of it, use it as a template, paste it onto the wall where you need to do it, and then drill into it for your starter holes. A couple of other stylings that are available. Um, these are medallions that are not uh, with back plates and posts. These are pins. These are smaller. They're more like buttons. I believe they're about two or two and a half inches in diameter. Or you have this um, hook. But these again would work really well in tying a drapery on. I've used these small ones on a cornice, screwed them into the cornice, and then draped a valance. Uh, or a cuffed valance, uh, and then and the, it's held. These pins have held them. And though we're not doing a lot of them these days, we do have the ring holders in case somebody's asking for a rig over rod or a pole swag through rings. We also have a flush mount swag, as you can see here, to do treatment similar to that. Remember when we used to do those little harps from. Kirsch, right? Now, some of our finials, which are available in our medallions, also um, have a right and a left to them. So, uh, just as a little reminder and a tip, that if you're doing, say, for example, the birds or our oak leaf or this leaf and branches, you need to specify left or right orientation, whether it's a uh, <coughs> tie back or a sway holder. We do, as I mentioned before, iron and wood product, uh, projections in Design Arts, and here are projections from two and a half inches in the wood to uh, six and a half in the iron, and then also we do the pedestals for a more decorative look. The other thing that I think is great about being able to do medallions in Orion is that you have basically 
an infinite number of finishes because you've got 35 finishes in iron art, you've got 12 in our wood art, you've got six in Italian, and you've got design art which does 58 finishes plus the dual finishes which I'll talk about in a minute will match a color for Sherwin Williams and or Ben Moore for you or you can send us a fabric swatch or a color chip and we can certainly also do true custom color. Now within the new design art line we do dual finishes so in the catalog you'd be able to see on every finial we tell you what the decor finish is I'm sorry, and what will be the accent finish and the we can mix or match any of the 58 decor finishes and there are 11 accent finishes such as silver leaf or gold leaf or silver polished. Several of our finish finials, the um, emblem, the insignia, the inlaid base, and the decal also allows you to do inlays like this little leaf on the finial and then also specify an accent finish. So in a, what other words, you're kind of cust truly customizing that finial for your medallion. So next let's talk about tiebacks. So you know, as I mentioned, all our finials, with the exception of the Milano and the Eclectic, are available as tiebacks. But so often, I get questions about where should I mount my tiebacks, or where do I tell my installer to screw in the, the whole back or the swag holder? Well, you know, really, your mounting height is going to vary by design intent and by how much light you want to allow in the window. And that's a conversation you should have had with your client early on before you're specifying the project. When you hang them low, like in this particular picture on the left, it's a much leaner look. It's a um, longer, narrower look, and it also doesn't let in as much light. When you do, do them high, you're letting in more light, and it also seems to widen the room, uh, the window, or the, the treatment width. One tip to keep in mind if you are tying back a drapery, if you're doing a drapery that's bracket to bracket or rod face is wider than it is long, it should never be tied back in the center. So in other words, if I'm doing a drapery panel that's 156 inches bracket to bracket and my uh, finish length is 98 and a half, I would never put them in the center because you never get a really pretty a scoop or a belly to that tie back. It looks like it's, it's tied back at an angle. And it's not as pretty. And also keep in mind that when you're working with box pleated drapery panels and tabs, that they do need special dressing. Sometimes your customers say, I want grommet draperies or tab top draperies. And they aren't aware that it really does take a little bit more to dress when you're tying them back. A good rule of thumb is that your panels should be two thirds into the window and one third onto the wall. And here are some examples of tying them back, whether you want to do it as a quarter of the total width, a third of the total width, or a half of the total width. But it really does come down to proportion. And it's really about knowing the rules of the fifth and sixth. So we've talked about golden proportions uh, before. So if you remember some of our conversations about figuring proportions, one of the things that I typically do when I teach is that um, you should take the overall length of the treatment, what, what's the finish length that you want to be working with, if, if there's a panel or not, divide it first by five and then by six because then that's going to help you determine the correct ratios and correct proportions of the components within that treatment. So for example, if I had an eight foot ceiling and I was doing a 96 inch treatment, I would divide it first by five and I'd get about 19 and a quarter. So that um, long point for me is going to be somewhere between 19 and 20 inches and I'm going to divide it then again by six and get 16 and then the short point is going to be somewhere between um, but around 16 inches and then I'm going to apply some of my other guidelines uh, for the design intent or sketch it out if it's not going to work or that I've got some obstructions etc. So you say to me you know what does why? Well, it's basically about doing the math because once you know 
what your ratios are, whether it's sixth or fifth, then you kind of have an idea of where these components and top treatments and valances, etc., are going to fall within your treatment. So, for example, your swag drop is typically, um, if it's mounted up toward the ceiling, it's one fifth of the total. And your cascades typically should be about three times the swag drop. But again, always sketch for intent. Oops. Some other proportion tips are, remember, you don't want to divide the window in half, a la you aren't going to put your tie back in the middle of the window. It's going to be somewhere with uh, around the golden mean and you want to sort of avoid more sight lines. And by tying a drapery back, you do create another sight line. So you want possibly to line up that tie back with some sort of architectural element within the window if that's possible. So use the golden mean as your starting back height. You know, so if you're, if you're uh, installer says, where do you want me to tie this back? I typically will say to them, where does it, what does it look like at 38, 8 inches off the floor? Which on an 8 foot ceiling, 38 inches off the floor, somewhere between 36 and 38 is where the golden mean would fall. And then I start playing with it based on design intent. But no matter where you place that tie back, you should be selling concealed tie back treatments with everything, whether it's a medallion, a swag, a post, you can put those up for the decorative portion of it, but you don't want to get that crushing that you get, especially if you're layering treatments. All tie back directly should have a concealed or a Carson tie back. Should never expose a wall, you know, here or here, or again, like here, just as a couple of tie back tips for you. So here's some stylings. Again, you can still do the fabric tie back, but you can use a medallion, for example, at the end of it. Or isn't this a beautiful wired um, tie back? So what are there? What whether it's jewelry, necklaces, what's out there right now that could be really interesting and used for tie backs that the customer uh, friends don't have. Now embraces, I mentioned these early on and I love these. I particularly love these for customers that want to tie their draperies back during the day in a bedroom scenario because this is um, on a back plate, it screws into the wall, there's a J hook here and a swivel and then you see it looks like a shepherd's hook and it comes in any of the finishes. We sell these in all of our finishes through the Iron Art collection. So it actually falls below or behind, excuse me, the drapery panel. So it would be placed about here. And you literally pick it up just like a shepherd's crook and you catch the drapery panel when you want to pull down. When you want to close it for at night, you let it go and it falls behind the drapery and it's never seen. Love those. And we they, um, don't use them enough, I think, in the U.S. like they do in um, Europe. Again, as with medallions, you can get posts, iron and wood, you can get a pedestal hold back. You can also get a U-bend tie back. Um, the U-bend tie back's projection is three and a half. Um, to order any different projection, you'd have to do a custom order and there would be a upcharge. And then you have the projection uh, which is expandable on the post uh, projection for your tie back from three to four and a half. And again, anything over that would be custom. Now, this isn't exactly tie backs, but I kind of threw these in because I think that they kind of fall in that category, and that's swing arms. Here you can see uh, Toby Failer was using swing arms on this uh, sliding glass door. But I really love them because, first of all, um, you can swing things out of the way. Now, they don't hold a whole lot of weight. They really only come up to about 30 to 36 inches in width before they really start kind of um, bending on you. You can get a support bracket, but then again, the customer is going to have to lift that up and move it. If she's fine with it, then not a problem. Um, its standard projection is half inch and it's on a, a swivel uh, as a back plate. You also get several different mounting plates. So that's it for Tie One On uh, this month. I hope you got some good tips and tricks. If anybody has any questions, please go ahead and um, and uh, type in.
Ah, medallions on the ends of embraces. Good question, Francis. Um, I've never seen that, but you know what? It would you. I don't know that you need to even do a decorative wall plate because it's hidden behind the drapery. But you could do like a small um, something on that. Usually there's a ball at the end of the shepherd's hook or another, you know, scroll. So that that could be interesting. Good question. Um, how is the golden mean calculated? A whole nother seminar, <laughs> Susan, but no. Um, actually, the golden mean is the dividing line between two unequal but harmonious rectangles. And it's usually um, 1.6874 um, up from the uh, bottom of the of the uh, bottom of the two rectangles. Uh, you know what, let me, it's difficult to explain it without visuals and I didn't want to get into a proportion seminar, but let me send you some information and um, you can see it because I think you, you need to visually see what I'm talking about with a golden mean. But you should use a golden mean. Um, a good way, a good analogy for the golden mean is if you ever had an art class in high school and they told you that the point of emphasis or the focal point of a painting was never in the exact center. It was always a little up or a little down from the exact center. And that's because that focal point falls on the golden mean. So that's the relationship there. Okay, so we have um, a drawing also today, as usual, and I'm going to be giving away a ring set and a rod set, and the winner of the ring set is Jane Lemley, and the winner of the rod set is Mary Vigno, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm mispronouncing it, Mary V-I-G-N-O-N-E. So Jane and Mary, if you would type in to your question box your... Um, addresses, then we'll be able to ship those out to you. So I need your shipping address, not your, not just your email, and we'll be in touch. Thank you guys so much for, oh, good, got it. Can I scroll through some of your pics again so you can capture, yeah, I didn't realize the option was available until halfway through. Sure. Uh, let me go back here and see what I can go. I'm going to do it really fast. Building that those portfolios, huh? All right. So let me let me go. So medallions, particularly because I know a lot of times people are always looking for. Oops. Medallion. Give me a minute here. Okay. Here's the first one. Second. This is the third. Another one with specialty windows. Arched. These are Susan Keeves. This is designer Tony's. And then I've got a couple in um, tiebacks for you. That's a great tieback. And that's an embrace. All right. Uh, can I get a copy of the proportion tips? Sure, Mar uh, Maria. Not a problem. And um, I want to thank you all for coming to today's webinar. Don't forget that you can get a hold of us um, on our websites, ironartbyorion.com. Check us out on our blog, which is Spark. And you can find that in the top nav. And um, follow us on Pinterest and definitely on uh, uh, Pinterest, Facebook, and Twitter. And I'm sorry, here are our 
social media sites and one other thing that we do have on our Orion site that you might not be aware of is we have all of our distributors listed by state so if you don't have an account with us and you're wondering if one of your favorite distributors is carrying Orion you can check that out on our website so thanks again everybody for coming see you next month